Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Hopily Ever After's Friday Brew Review. My name's Natalie from the Devil Wears Parsley and this is Angel from the Barrel Age Vegetarian. Um, we have a great show for you today, especially if you're a hop head. Hop heads in the house. Hop heads in the house. So we'll give you a chance to get your beers, but I wanna talk about something real quick. Um, one of my coworkers this week asked me what the, what's our purpose for this show? What are we doing? Like, what's our goal for this show? So we came up with a mission statement, right? That's right. Yes. So our mission statement is to educate, promote, and socialize. Um, for education, we want to kind of demystify the intimidating world of craft beer. We want to define these beer terminology, um, dissecting the makeup of complex beers so that you're confident in going out into the world and exploring this beautiful community and in product on your own. Um, we also want to promote the communities and um, help the communities that we live in by, by supporting our local businesses. And there's no better business right now than the craft beer and brewery industry. It's booming. You want to drink local and support small businesses. That's like the key to a good social economy, we think. We also want to socialize. There's no better people in the world than craft beer lovers. None. Every time we go out, we end up talking and shooting the shit and making, you know, wonderful, wonderful friends at these places. And it's just awesome. It's America's new way of breaking bread. So get out there and have a refreshing craft beer and awesome conversation with your friends. That's right. Today's brew that we selected really highlights a brewing company that is the epitome of everything we discussed in our, um, in our mission statement. So this week's beer is from California's Central Coast, Figueroa Mountain Brewing Company. And it's a double IPA named Lizard's Mouth. Oh, we got to show it off. They are in four packs right now. Look at that. I Lizard's absolutely mouth. love the art of this Isn't beer cool? from this it brewing company. It just looks like it's, it's refreshing. Oh, love it. So we're going to talk about that. Yeah, but before we get into this delightful brew... Here's what's on shelves now. All right. I'm gonna, gonna open that beer, Nat. Can you oh, pass yeah, me yeah, that? Oh, yeah, yeah, For show, here's our glasses this time. Got pretty IPA glasses. And... Thank you. All right, on shelves. Um, IPA heavy this, this week. We've got Port Brewing's Anniversary IPA, Mother Earth, Big Mother, Triple IPA. It packs an astonishing... Um, amount of IBUs. I think it's 125. What, 125 IBUs? Yeah, that's a lot. And we're going to talk about that later. Wow. So you can know what, what IBUs are. Um, Bear Republic's Pacer, it's their session IPA. Kern River, just outstanding. I know a lot of people want to get their hands on the Kern River stuff, so now's your chance. Get to La Bodega. Go now. It's a good brewery. I mean, go after, after the, the show. show. <laughs> um, the Darkies. We have an update on Son of the Baptist that we reviewed uh, last week. Oh, so boy. Do last we week, ever have an update? Son of the Baptist was batch 13. This week, we've got batch 14. And if you remember, we talked about the different coffees that go into this beer. They want to highlight the coffee in the beer. Um, but these are the beans that were aged in tequila barrels. So it's available. And Say um, that again. Tequila barrel aged beans. coffee beans? Yes. And what did you say last week, Angel? Um, anything that has to do with the tequila and barrel aging and coffee beans? Mm -hmm. I'm all over that. Yeah, but is, what is did what you I rate said? last week's beer? <laughs> oh, so last week I rated this beer <laughs> and I said that um, I probably wouldn't buy this beer again. It was a good beer. You know, I think it was, I rated it a 3.75 or something like that. But still probably wouldn't buy it again because there's so many beers out there. But then we get an email blast or an Instagram post from La Bodega saying that they picked up the beer that's the 14th edition with these tequila bean barrels. Tequila bean barrels. And um, <clears throat> I was like, all right, I'll, I'll pick up this beer again because it's a different batch. It's not yeah, the exact same batch. beer. Uh-huh. And how many did you buy? <laughs> bought two of them. <laughs> this guy. We haven't drank guy. it yet, but um, I'm super looking forward to that just because of the coffee that it's made. Different coffee from uh, Colorado, Longmont, Colorado or something like that. 
Super excited. Thanks for joining us if you're just now tuning yeah, in. Yeah, what's up, Jasmine? How Happily you Ever After's Friday Brew Review. Yes. So continuing Hi, on Jasmine. the um, on the beers that are available today, the others are Coronado Brewing's Berry the Hatchet. They brewed it with raspberries, blackberries, and boysenberries. That sounds like it would be delicious. Perfect for maybe Memorial Day next week. Coronado Brewing Company. It's, we haven't been down to the actual facility yet, but we've been to the restaurant on Coronado mm -hmm. Island. Which I'd say was a cool place to go, and I'd recommend it. Yeah. Their good. beers are always fairly priced on the lower end. I like that about them. Yeah. Um, also, the brewery has three offerings. We've got Frucht, Passion Fruit Berliner Weiss, um, Tart of Darkness, and the Pottery. Pottery. The brewery. It's a barrel aged Dell. B-R-U-E-R-Y. That's an interesting place. Um... I'd suggest um, trying them out if you're really adventurous because they are adventurous brewers. Yes. Hi, Travis. What's up, Travis? Also, Hangar 24 has a new mix pack out. Um, they included Betty IPA and some others that weren't listed, but it sounds like it's a, it's a good one. So that is what Looks is on, on the shelves. shelves. We're going to get better about being in sync. Yeah. Try that again. And that's, that is... Okay, we'll go with yours. Yeah. That's what's, what's on shelves. shelves. <laughs> hey, nailed that. Nailed it. All right, probably couldn't nail that after we've had a sip of this oh, beer today. Oh, I'm going to put this over here. So we're going to talk about Lizard Mouth, Lizard's Mouth, from Figueroa Mountain Brewing Company. The label is just so pretty. Look at those colors. It's like it a tattoo, like, man. Like yeah. It looks like a beautiful desert sunset. It's like part of your Kinda tattoo, like, yeah, actually. Yeah, I know. Like, like, check that out. Maybe I'll get that tattooed next. Yeah, I can see this lizard, like, <laughs> crawling up your arm right there. <laughs> the Lizard King. So, this is an Imperial IPA. Mm hmm Or a double IPA. It's a uh, 9% in ABV. That's the um, alcohol. There you go. It's the alcohol Perfect. percentage. And it, it packs a, a comparable 75 IBUs. Tasting notes, Natalie? Yes. This is supposed to have some uh, mango, papaya, and pineapple flavors. And boy, do we ever love at least two out of three of those um, ingredients, right? Papaya has been a challenge for us. Papaya has been a challenge. But our smoothies consistently have... Mango or pineapples in them. You've, you've got to balance out all the beer drinking with some healthy green smoothies in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I think um, we try to eat so well so that we can really uh, enjoy beer um, on a regular basis. And You know, I'm not saying drink it all the time, but drink it all the time. All right, so this beer has a, a few malts in it. Um, the pale two-row malt and the pale crystal malt. As well as dextrin. Yeah, some... I looked up dextrin, and um, I guess it really has a very good mouthfeel, like a kind of viscous kind of mouthfeel. And it's very sweet. Adds a little bit of sweetness into your malt. Mm -hmm. So three malts, and um, uh, there was a few, a few hops, different varieties of hops that they use in this beer. So let's move on. Move on. Okay, so this is the multiple award winning in 2014-2015. They won some awards for this lizard's mouth. It's inspired by the rock formation that sits on the crest of the Santa Inez Mountains, and it's a popular hiking spot for locals. So you can see that they kind of, um, what is that, superimposed a lizard on this rock formation? So the, I... It sounds like that this rock formation is what um, what they named it after. And God, if the sunsets are like that, I'd be hiking up there all the time too. Maybe Diggity. we should do that one day. Sure. Now, okay. I think that uh, Figueroa uses a lot of their landscapes for multiple beers of theirs in, in mm -hmm. the artwork, and that's really. Have you ever been up to Central Coast? It's a beautiful, it's beautiful. place. Just a beautiful place. It really is. So let's um, smell. What are we doing? So, it does smell sweet, that's for sure. Yeah, it does. And I am getting those like tropical flavors of the, what was it, pineapple, mango, papaya? I am too. Now this is a strong beer. It's 9%. So why are we drinking at noon when we've only had a smoothie? Oh, 
that's not gonna. We gotta get it. It's not I, gonna be a good thing. You know, we thing. have to. I, I was thinking of doing this. We we should um, pair this with some sort of snack when we do this. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need food or, immediately yes. after this before it. And just, it would make sense since I'm the devil wears parsley. I'm doing all the food stuff. So yeah, pairing coming we'll, soon. We'll iron to that Hopley's out. Hopkins ever after all Friday right. for review. So what are we gonna do? Taste this beer up. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Oh shoot! Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. So as we chew on this lizard's mouth, we want to take a deeper look into beer terminology because that's, you know, we're kind of solidifying what we're doing here. So welcome to Hop Talk. Hey, Hop Talk, coming Hop. at you. All right, so IPA. What does that stand for, Natalie? It stands for India Pale Ale. Yeah, India Pale Ale. This is, uh, this beer has been around, this style of beer has been around since 1875, somewhere in there. Now, when you say the letter is IPA, today most people are commonly referring to the American IPA, which is a hopped up, more floral, bitter version of the now withering English style IPA. And trust me, if you've accidentally, if you accidentally buy an English style IPA like I did one time when I was first getting into beers, and I was like, oh, there's um, Fuller's IPA. Fuller is an English brewing company. And oh boy, was I disappointed when I, when I drank that beer. I'm like, now I'm really confused about IPAs. So I think uh, Travis McHugh, he's joining us. He might know. He's been in England been and world. been around the world. And I'm wondering if they get a lot of American style IPAs over there yet. We're forcing our way into your worlds. <laughs> So IPAs are generally amber to light in color. This is a double IPA. It's kind of a deep color. Yeah, and it should be a little deeper color. Because of the more... So IPAs range in alcohol percentage from 5.5% to 7.5%. That's a good, solid IPA. You get a 7.5%er, uh, that is definitely yeah. a good one. That'll get you feeling good. Yeah, I won't turn my back on a 5.5%er. Those are good in the summer. But uh, anywhere in between that range, booyah, you're typically on point. And like I said, they have uh, an herbal or citric and or citric character to them. Earlier, Natalie, we mentioned Mother Earth Brewing Company's... 125 IBU. Yeah, for their, what's that called? Beer. Big Mother Triple Big Mother, IPA. Yes. So you hear the words, numbers, 125, and the letters IBU. Why would a brewing company stamp this on their beer? Because they're saying, trying to sell the fact that this sucker is hopped up to the top. Hop to the top. I'm gonna, just going to coin that phrase right now. <laughs> so 125 IBUs. What IBU stands for is International Bittering or Bitterness Units. Now, this is a measure of the actual bitterness of a beer as contributed by the alpha acid from hops. The next time you're at your local beer store, I really encourage you to read the labels of, of several of the beers. Um, that's the great thing about craft beer. They want to kind of highlight the fact that the IBU rating is almost 100, which 100 is a big thing in beer. And for that uh, Mother Earth Triple IPA to put 125 IBUs on there, that sucker is just topped with hops. And that's really a cool thing. The beer we have today is 75 IBUs. And if you're just joining us, this is the one, Lizard's Mouth from Figaro Mountain. So the hoppier style, the hoppier style beers will have a higher IBU ratings. All right, so let's move on. Yes. All right, so um, the American Double IPA. And we have also American Imperial IPA. And you might think those are different things but they are absolutely the exact same thing. Yeah, they are. They, all right. So the description of an India Pale Ale is you take an India Pale Ale and you feed it steroids, ergo the term double IPA. So we're talking about double IPAs now. And the difference are, um, oh gosh, yes. The imperial usage of that word, imperial, comes from the Russian imperial stout, a style of strong stout originally brewed in England for the Russian Imperial Court of the 1700s. Double IPA, though, is often the preferred name. And what it is, is they add double the amount of grain to make the sugar content bigger, giving you a bigger, 
higher alcohol beer. And they also double the hops. They double everything. Yes, they everything, double everything is doubled. It's simple. And Don't if, get confused. If you're going to aggressively hop a beer like we talked about with the IBUs, you definitely want to balance that out with the sugars. Because if you're not balancing it out, this beer is going to be really bitter and nothing in that beer is going to contrast enough to make it enjoyable. All right. So, Figaro Mountain Brewery. Yeah. Like most craft breweries, Figaro Mountain Brewing Company started as a family affair with the father and son team of uh, Jim and Jamie Deitenhofer. They founded the California Central Coast Beer Slang and Operation in 2010. Now, in just over five years, Fig Mountain has grown from just a handful of employees to over 200. Wow. That's amazing. All right, Nat, so... All right, so I'm going to talk about their... Brick and mortar, they have six different tap rooms in the central coast of California. Um, there's one in Arroyo Grande, Bealton, Los Olivos, Santa Barbara, Santa Maria, and Westlake Village. And I have to tell you that we have been to the Bealton one. I don't know if that's the first one or not, um, but it is a beautiful establishment. I think it, it might be. I'm not sure. But um, it's beautiful in there. It's just set, I mean, that whole area, that whole Central Valley is just so, so pretty. Yeah, definitely. Um, you get a, a warm feeling in there. And although it's like, a, the Buellton one is like a warehouse type of situation. Um, inside, they they really They've loaded really it up with it woods. And, lots of wood. Yeah, and it's one, place. one thing that I distinctly remember, we sat on this um, pub table, and on the wall next to us was a like a shadow box that had all different types of barbed wire. Do you remember that? Uh, vaguely. <laughs> we had a lot of beer that day. But um, it, it was interesting to see the different types of barbed wire that they used around there because there, I, I believe there's a lot of farming that goes around along around there too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So, so that yeah. was cool. So What's Natalie, up, guys? What are you getting from this beer? Oh, boy. I'm getting buzz. <laughs> <laughs> mm, and trust, it's so it's good. The, we don't drink before the brew review, so you're getting us... You're getting us good. You're getting us fresh. Yeah. With a clear head. Mm-hmm. And then as we start to drink a little bit of it, God, we choose such yeah. strong beers sometimes. Yeah. But this is a beer that we've sought out since we've been to that um, brewery. One of our one of our friends, um, she they they got married and they went up the central coast. And this is one of the places they went, and all they would talk about the lizard's mouth, lizard's mouth. Got to try the lizard's mouth. So we went and tried the lizard's mouth, and now we are hooked. I mean, we didn't get this. This is just newly distributed in our area. Yeah. So, oh, man. We're just now seeing it here in the Inland Empire. We're just now seeing it. There's been other offerings from Figaro Mountain. Mm -hmm. and Like, we've seen it in L.A. before. Yeah, and down in Orange County, I think we picked some up at the, the Whole Foods over in Costa Mesa. Mm -hmm. So we got a few uh, people joining us. Thanks for joining. Yes, thanks this for joining. This is for all the live people. We hope um, we're going to share the video. So yeah. if you can't make the, appoint the appointment at noon on Friday, then you know just watch the video whenever you want. What's up to a, uh, an old beer pal? Travis Scott is Travis Scott in the What's house. Up? And uh, our niece, Jasmine, Travis McHugh, and Jason Napayon. Yes. Shout out to all you people watching live. Yes. All over the world. All over the world. All right. So we're we're continuing to taste this beer. And um, like I said, we've sought it out. Like this is a, we, Angela and I kind of talked about our rating system for the show. And, um, <laughs> and like, what What is our criteria? Are we going to go off just our personal tastes? Are we going to go off the the style of beer? That's like is it a go ahead That's what I'm interested in is in um, we had a lot of discussion about this this week is rating it it does look good Jason ah Check Jason that out. it's noon it's Friday it's get beautiful. a beer rating the beers as for its individual style, you know and um and we got to make sure that we stay true to that. Because, yeah, I love IPAs. Natalie loves Belgian beers. Mm -hmm. But if we get a sour, are we going to rate it as the people that don't love sours? No, I do love sours, too. But maybe yeah. Natalie, not so much. No, but they she's hurt. had enough sours. You know, you've had enough sours to know 
what style you like, what a good one is, what a what a bad one is. Um, so we want to rate these beers as to the style it is. And this mm-hmm. week's style is the American Double IPA. Yes, very hot. Slash hoppy. Imperial IPA. Mm-hmm. Words mean the same, Double IPA, Imperial. Um, so we want to judge it as that style. Yeah. Now... Now, I would buy this beer again. I would go and seek it out. It's it's like one of those beers, like especially in this four-pack. I would love to bring this to a party and, uh, you know, Small be, be party. the star of the I want, show. <laughs> I want my um, Hey, you could share this beer, too. Like, you know, you could share this with two or three people and get a good tasting of it, I think. It's not an invite. Nah, no, these are all ours right now. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, are we ready to Yeah, let's rate, rate this, this sucker. Beer? Okay, so we have our... Our um, scorecards, we're going to write them down because we we don't want to influence one another. This right? week's Friday Brew Review. So, Figaro ready? Mountains, Lizard's Mouth. All right, I'm going to write, write my score down. Right. Have any of you had this beer before, and what do you think about it? Okay. All right. Man, oh, man, oh, man. This is, uh, this is a really hard decision here. Okay, I'm done. Go. Natalie, to you, what justifies a, a 5 out of 5 barrel rating? A 5 out of 5 barrel rating is something that when you when I taste it, my head explodes. You know, it's like, wow, this beer is awesome. You know, and I want to get more of it. I want to drink more of it. You know, that, that would be my... And, and the uniqueness of it, too. Like, this beer has those tropical pineapple, papaya... Yeah. Mango. That's, and that's what it said it would deliver. And it does. It really does. It's it's great. It would be great served with like a pulled barbecue pork sandwich. Yeah. Like or... it, it's rich, but it the bitterness would cut the sweetness of the barbecue sauce, you know what I'm saying? I think that would be good. And I we talked about we've been all about grilled cheeses lately, and Angel doesn't want me to say this, but if you're a vegetarian like we are, it would be great with a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> I think, uh, no, it's okay, because um, I'm having a burrito right after this, so. Oh, burrito. There are some really good beer rating systems. Okay, Beer Advocate use, oh, Travis Scott Taylor uh, wrote a comment. If you look at Beer Advocate, a lot of people use a system that's based off appearance, aroma, mouthfeel, flavor, and adherence to style. Yeah. I think so, um, that's exactly what we're trying to achieve here. Right. We could probably get better at it. <laughs> but, you know what? A little bit of um, of our opinions are going to be of our all of our opinions going to be in the beer. Mm. But man, I think it's really hard to not put your style preference to have an effect on on how you judge a beer, mm-hmm. and and it's something that you know. Yeah, I'm sure. All right, connoisseurs can work with. It's all good, Travis. I'm glad you showed up. It's you know. It's live, so it's it's hard. You know, I understand. I get a lot of my information from Beer Advocate. <clears throat> That's a great website to go to, in mm-hmm. my opinion, yeah. to, to get um, beer information. And also Untapped, too. I go to Untapped when I want to look up a beer, like on the fly, out in the wild. Yeah. So. People are rating beers on Untapped. All right, so let's Just reveal. Just like us. Yeah. Natalie, what do you rate this beer? How many barrels? I rate it a 4.5. 4.5 out of 5 out of five. barrels. Yeah. And for me, I rate this beer a 4.25 out of 5 barrels. I think that's pretty good. I mean, pretty like close. I said before, it's, it's true to style. It's got a great malt backbone. It's definitely very hoppy. And it's something that I mm. I want more of. I want to seek it out. I want to go find it. I think that the reason it, it didn't get a, a little bit of higher review from me is is that it wasn't as herbal or citric as I would like. Okay. I could use a little more citrus in it to just kind to of cut, cut through that yeah. malt. I, it's that, a it's a flavorful true. malt taste. I really like that about it. And maybe they were trying to highlight the malt, but the, you know, um, I wish the hops punched out just a little bit more. Natalie, would you buy this beer again? Hell yeah. I'll probably buy it again later today. (laughs) Because, Jason, we don't have one more because, in all honesty, 
We, we did dug a little, into this four pack last night. We dug a little pre research. <laughs> yeah, we, research and development. I love this. But, stories. Jason, you're a Riverside guy. Yeah. Travis Scott, you're an uh, Inland Empire guy, I believe. You can get it at La Bodega in Riverside, California. Why do yeah. we pump up La Bodega so much? Because, as we said in our mission statement, support your local businesses. Yep. Um, does Bevmo have this? I don't know, but I tell you what BevMo does have. They have the Figueroa Mountain Davy Brown, which and some of you non hop heads would like. And Hoppy Poppy. And the Hoppy Poppy. And that's is, a regular IPA. That is a regular IPA. It's a little on the light side, in my opinion, of IPAs. Yeah. But still, really, anything they put out, they're kind of like, you know, I have breweries in my mind that they can do no wrong. Like, Modern Times is one of them. Um, Mother Earth is one of them. Iron Fire? And, oh, yeah, of course, Iron Fire. And, Look yeah, we're that. getting We're, we're getting, getting thumbs. thumbs. Uh, we love the love. All right. Um, so, um, yeah. So, this is a brewing company. I it won't no say wrong. that they... I haven't had a bad beer from them, but I do think that their Hoppy Poppy could be more courageous, if you will. Oh, when was the last time you had it, though? I've it's had that beer to, a couple of times. It's hard to talk about it when it's not, like, fresh in your brain. So. Yeah, I've had it a couple of times, and I've okay. decided I'm not going to buy that beer again because of my preferences. It's still a good beer. Thanks, Travis Scott Taylor. We definitely do have to get a beer soon, and... Jason, we have not... I don't think we've tried Squall IPA from Dogfish Head. Um, but Squall. Dogfish, Dogfish Head, Head is a, another great brewery. Something about them. They're... Uh, Dogfish Head, we're getting a little off topic here, but yeah. it's part of the comments. This is yeah. we part love of socializing. We yes. love socializing. Yeah, and that's part of our mission statement, too. We love having beers with our friends. Cheers to you guys. All right. Dogfish Head is awesome. I agree. Um, we did have their... Beer to listen, no. Yeah. Beer, beer to listen to music to. To or listen to music to. Yeah, that was really good. That was it was a, a triple, triple Belgian them. triple, which is right up my alley. But thanks for joining us today on Hopley Ever After. Make sure to like the Double Wears Parsley page, Facebook, and Barrel Age Vegetarian on Facebook. Coming soon. For all oh, things about there. beer and food. So we'll see you next week on our Memorial Day special. We're doing a special. A special episode next week, episode six. This is episode five today, but episode six next week in Sin City. So we will see you then. Cheers, guys. Remember, live hopily ever, ever after. after.